hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to give an overview of the relationships between the six trig functions, the six trigonometric functions. So all of these have proofs or reasons behind why they are the way they are, but I know that that's not something everyone's interested in. So I'm going to give you all of the relationships or the identities for these functions. And then at the end of the video, after I've shown them all to you, I will go through the reasoning behind them. So you can decide how much of this information you'd like, but it is going to be helpful to know how the trig functions are related to each other. So what we can do is we can say that sine is equal to one over the cosecant of theta. This should initially seem pretty reasonable since we know that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Then similarly, we can say cosecant of theta is equal to one over sine of theta. Then our second grouping has that cosine of theta is equal to one over secant of theta. Similarly, secant of theta is equal to one over cosine of theta. This should also make sense intuitively because cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other. Then for our third grouping, we have that tangent of theta is equal to one over cotangent of theta, and that cotangent of theta is equal to one over tangent of theta. We have an additional set of identities here. We can say that tangent is also equal to sine over cosine, and that cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. Okay. So these are our relationships between the trig functions. We also call them identities because we're just saying that these two things are basically identical. Sine is the same as one over cosecant, that sort of thing. And so I'll spend the rest of this video explaining the more rigorous proofs for why these are the way they are. But if you're not interested in that, that's okay too. So we're going to start with sine and cosecant and then second we'll do cosine and secant. And third, we'll do the tangent and cotangent identities. So let's start with sine of theta equals one over cosecant of theta. So to prove this is true, I'm going to start with one over cosecant of theta and show that it's equal to sine. So we know that cosecant is r over y, that's how we defined it to be. So I can write this as one over r over y by definition. Then I can simplify by multiplying by the reciprocal. So I have one times y over r. This just gives me y over r. And by definition of sine, sine is y over r. So there we go. We've shown that one over cosecant of theta is equal to sine of theta. And I'll draw this little box here that just tells us that our proof is done. This is just how we usually notate some things when we do proofs in later math classes, so I'm just bringing a little bit of that in here. All right, then we can actually just use this identity now that we know it's true to find the similar identity. I'm just gonna multiply things around until I get the other one. So I'll multiply the cosecant over. So I have sine times cosecant equals one, and then I'll just divide by sine. So I have cosecant of theta equals one over sine of theta. And there we go. Those are our first two identities, and they show how sine and cosecant are related. We're gonna follow a similar process to this for the other functions. So let's now do cosine and secant. We're going to prove the identity that cosine of theta is equal to one over secant of theta. So I'm going to start with one over secant of theta and then rewrite it until we can show that it's equal to cosine. So by definition of what we chose for secant, we said that secant is r over x. So I have that one over r over x is one over secant. Now I'm going to simplify. So I can multiply by the reciprocal. I have one times x over r. That is actually just x over r, which is what we have for the definition of cosine. x over r is cosine of theta. And there we go. We can similarly rearrange things to get the other identity. So I'll multiply the secant over to the other side. I have cosine times secant equals one, and then I'll divide by cosine. So I have secant equals one over cosine, and there we go. Those are our second pair of identities. Okay, so lastly, we have the tangent and cotangent identities. I think the one where we show that tangent is sine over cosine is sort of interesting. So the same process will follow for one over cotangent. 
and one over tangent. Those two are going to look just the same as the ones we did. I'll include it in the notes if you want to see it and you just need to confirm. But let's work on the tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta identity. Let's prove that one. So I'll start with sine over cosine, and I'm going to rewrite it in terms of their definitions. So sine is y over r, and cosine is x over r. So I'll put those in, and now I have y over r divided by x over r. Now I'll multiply by the reciprocal. We've done that a lot now. So I'm getting y over r times r over x. My r values are going to cancel, and so I have y over x, which is how we defined tangent. So tangent is y over x, and there we go. We'd follow the exact same process for cotangent equals cosine over sine, so I would just plug in their definition similarly and simplify. And there we go. That's our last set of trig identities to show the relationships between our six trig functions. Again, you don't really need to know why these are the way they are or the proofs for them, but I think it's nice, at least for me, when I get to see the explanation for why something is how it is, it kind of helps me remember it and believe it and just take it seriously. Okay, that's it for this video. We'll talk more about how to actually use these identities in example problems in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.